Hey gang, what's going on? Hope you're all having a good day out there and thanks for taking a little time out of your day to watch the video. That's much appreciated. And today I'm going to address sort of a reoccurring question I get from some subscribers. It's actually sort of all along the same topic, but in a, in a variety of different forms that they ask the question in. That is, is how much make how much money do pros make? How much does it cost to fish professionally? How do guys afford to fish professionally? Uh, all that type of stuff. I put together, uh, oh, well, first of all, you guys may have seen uh, Jim Moyna's video he did on what it costs to fish professionally uh, about six months ago. This is along the same lines, except I'm going to throw living expenses into it. So um, I'm going I'm to do a combined reality of how much it costs to fish tournaments at the top level, what your living expenses are, and show you guys on paper why professional bass fishing has become an elitist sport and uh, address some of the the underlying issues with that we'll get to the end of the video so i think you guys will find it really interesting real quick just wanted to invite you guys if you hadn't had a chance to hit that view products tab when you, the video comes on you'll see a little icon that says view products at the bottom of the video that's uh, just 30 products i suggest that you guys might be interested in all you have to do is just click those products take a look at them and a channel that gets a small percentage of that click on there good way to support the channel if you want to do that much appreciated okay guys what i did here um i you guys have heard me talk here on the channel before about how i think that bass fishing is becoming it's pricing itself out of the reality for the average american citizen that has a dream about wanting to fish professionally when i started back in 1985 it wasn't like that entry fees were six hundred dollars there were six tournaments, six professional tournaments, and that was it. And uh, you could actually have another job and fish professionally. A brand new boat was like $12,000. That was 1986. And I'm gonna show you guys the comparison. So what I did here to sort of film, to sort of form a reality about it, I, I listed the expenses, the yearly expenses for the average family of four in the United States. And then I listed the tournament expenses that you're going to incur if you fish the top level circuits like the elite series mlfs tackle warehouse circuit you know what are considered professional circuits and i'm going to i'm going to itemize these and go through the list and show you how ridiculous this is and how i don't understand how people do it so anyway let's get into this a little bit first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to sort of just give a ballpark of an itemization for a family of four what their expenses are now i've I, I think I've lowballed this when we get to the end of it. In actuality, I think this total is probably an additional thirty to forty thousand dollars higher, but I'm gonna run it through here. So for a family four, I put and this is just based upon a, a broad average, I put um yearly mortgage expense uh, twenty one thousand six hundred, utilities thirty six hundred, phone internet twenty six hundred, food fourteen thousand, car payments for two cars. 14,000 uh, insurance, health health insurance, home insurance, uh, he all car insurance, all that, another 12,000. Clothing, miscellaneous, $2,000 for clothing, and miscellaneous at $10,000. That could be vacation, that could be dental, dental bills, it could just be some whatever oddball, $10,000, giving a yearly total of a ballpark of $66,200 living expenses for the average family of four. I believe that's on the low side. I think that you guys that have a family of four would know that. And then in addition to that, I'm going to list the tournament expenses that you can expect if you fish the top level tournaments. You're going to, you're talking about eight to nine tournaments at $5,000 a piece. So you're going to have a ballpark of $45,000 in entry fees. Um, your boat payment on average since, since, since there's so many pros now, nobody, there's only a handful of dudes out there that get a, a true sponsorship through a boat company. Most guys have to buy their boat. I put down an average boat payment of $700 a month, probably more if you guys are one of the dudes that have $20,000 worth of electronics on your boat. And that would add up to 8,400 a year boat payment. Your fuel, oil, truck service, all that type of stuff for fishing the circuit full time, 40,000 miles. Um, I put in there uh, $16,800 for all that. Your lodging, assume that you, assuming that you fish nine tournaments, you're gone about 10 days per tournament. The uh, allocation I think you get for your taxes is 130 a day. Lodging, you're looking at 11,700. Boat insurance, I put at 4,000. 
tackle, I put it 4,000, which is probably way low. You know, that's probably another 10,000 on that. Tolls, boat launch fees, all that type of stuff, 1,000. And your traveling food at 2,700, bringing the grand total to fit just tournament expenses, $93,600, bringing your total expenses that a professional angler would be responsible for coming up for if you had a family and fish tournaments of $159,800. So guys, here we get, this is what we got here. It's gonna take 159,000, you might as well say $160,000 to fish each year if you're, you have a family four. I can promise you that's on the low end. I can promise you it's probably another, you're probably pushing 180 to $200,000 between you get to look at it. Now, realistically, let's, let's look at performance, what you can expect to win. If you, say for example, if you're fishing the Elite Series or whatever like that, and you cash a top 50 check half the time, so it's, you're gonna make, uh, you know, four to five, th four, or 40 to $50,000. If you cash a top 50 check half the time and you don't bomb out on your other tournaments, you're probably gonna qualify for the Bassmasters Classic. You're probably gonna have a pretty strong season. And that's the same with the tackle warehouse circuit, whatever. So you're looking, if you win 40 to $50,000 in the course of a season, you've had a decent season. You haven't set it on fire, but you haven't sucked. You've had a pretty decent season. So we'll put in there, you win forty to fifty thousand dollars to offset on that hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Now sponsorships range; they're all over the board with that. Most of the guys out there anymore have sucked sponsorships. There's so many pros out there, so many tournaments that the days of the big tournament sponsorships are over. You got twenty five percent of the dudes out there that are probably knocking down, you know, a decent sponsorship. Uh, uh, retainers and everything like that. Overall, most people are, are struggling. So I'm gonna go ahead and put, uh, you know, say, say with sponsorship, some, we'll go ahead and just put the average generic sponsorship fee at 40 to $50,000. So assuming that you've got 40 to $50,000 off the sponsor, you won another 40 or $50,000 if you've had a good year, bringing your grand total to 90 to $100,000 of income that you've earned that year, and your living expenses are $160,000. You still come up a minimum, guys, of $60,000 in the hole every 12 months being a professional angler and having a decent season. We're not talking about you just did, we're talking about you got a decent sponsor, pro, a decent sponsor portfolio that you're bringing 40, 50,000 a year home from your sponsors. You're winning 40 to $50,000 a year and you still are in the whole $60,000, a minimum of $60,000. So here, here's what we have. The, the gravy train of professional fishing guys was in the 90s. I've been in it for almost five decades, or actually over five, de five decades now, because I started in the 80s. I've been through the whole everything. The best time in the sport to make a living as a professional bass angler was in the 1990s, the mid to late 1990s. That's when your entry fees were lower. That's when the payouts were higher. That's when there were more sponsorship opportunities. There wasn't near the anglers out there. Right now, 2022 is the toughest time I have ever seen in my life for the average dude out there to make a living in professional fishing. Yet these tournaments are filling up every, they, they, you, can't, you can't have enough tournaments to fill them up. My question is, is how, where are these, hundreds and hundreds, actually probably thousands of dudes, whole hundreds with the elite, with, on the elite level, coming up with this kind of jack. You know, you got, you, you know, you're, you're got 160 to $200,000 a year in expenses to fish and to live. You know, if you're doing good, you're making, if you're, if you're doing really good, you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year off your winning and sponsorships. It doesn't add up with that. My point of the video being is this is why I'm talking about professional bass fishing as becoming an elite of sport because the average American citizen cannot afford this. They cannot afford to sustain a family that costs one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars a year to support along with your tournaments and win a hundred thousand dollars and survive. That's why you see the people that are 
that are excelling in the sport and the people that are that are have a longevity in the sport, they have some type of external income source, usually from family money that comes with that. The days of the dude starting out like I did mowing grass for washing cars and mowing grass and sleeping in the back of your truck are done. You cannot do that. And uh, that's what I talk about a lot on this channel. When you guys watch my channel and you hear me rail about the uh, unlevel playing field and the income disparity and the fact that fishing has become an elitist sport on the top level, guys, this is what I'm talking about right here. This is the reality of it. I've been there. I've lived it. I know it. If you're sitting on your couch watching this and you haven't done it, I, I guys, I've done it. I can tell you what the deal is with it. So what's the answer to it, man? What is it? The, I don't know if there is an answer to it with that. The only answer that I see until tournament organizations get a handle on it and try to address this income, in, income inequality and disparity, it's going to continue to be the dudes that have the wealthy families that fish professionally. I've seen it, I hear it all the time about these guys out there that are buying their, their, their high school, college kids, brand new bass boats to compete in these tournaments. I'm not saying you're a bad person for doing that. I'm just saying everybody doesn't have access to those type of resources. And that's why professional bass fishing is unfair from a financial standpoint. And I would just like to see tournament organizations address it to where all these guys out there that have this dream about fishing professionally can do it if they don't have wealthy families. Because I get messages all the time from single family, 17, 18 year old kids that don't have any money saying, how can I do it? We don't, we, our family doesn't have very much money. And uh, I have to, I talk to those guys all the time about that. So anyway, guys, here it is. Dose of reality out there. Uh, that's the, the situation. Throw me some comments. I'd be curious, curious to hear what you guys have to think about it. And we'll talk to y'all later. See ya.